Hello, fellow risk takers, and welcome to my worst investment ever. Stories of loss to keep you winning. In our community, we know that to win in investing, you must take risk, but to win big, you've got to reduce it. Join our community and claim your podcast listener discount on my Valuation Masterclass Bootcamp, where students learn how to value companies like a pro and advance their career. Go to myworstinvestmentever.com to join for free. Fellow risk takers, this is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stotts from A. Stotts Academy, and I'm here with featured guest, David Walter. David, are you ready to rock? I'm ready to rock! <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, um, in the story of, our, of this episode is we had a little false start. In fact, you know, I always say that um, I've, I've really never had a problem in all of my episodes uh, of recording. I use Zoom, and it's worked flawlessly. But you and I had a, our first meeting and it's just like things just didn't work on that day. So I appreciate your patience and your willingness to come back. And luckily, we, you know, we didn't spend a whole time and find out it didn't work. We figured it out kind of partially through. So I appreciate your patience. And, oh, you. you know, hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with the greats, Neil Patel and John Lee Dumas on this show. So, of course, I might be patient for it. You are, you are amongst greatness, let me tell you. And you are bringing your greatness because you brought me into your world. And I've really enjoyed and learned a lot of lessons about, particularly about LinkedIn. You know, I, I'm okay on LinkedIn, but after following you, getting to know you, seeing what you do, uh, I'm inspired. And so I oh. you know, recommend all the listeners out there, you know, go to David Walter and go, you know, search him on LinkedIn. I'll put this, the, the link in the show notes and start following him. And what you'll see is you'll learn a lot about how to market on LinkedIn. A full calling business entrepreneurship. That's stuff exactly. I talk about. Exactly. But I love your title of your show. <laughs> and I had to think about it. That's I was the, like, you know what? That is good to let people know about the worst investment so they don't make the same mistake. Exactly. We're trying to <laughs> save a generation. Yes. Hopefully they're listening. But let me introduce you to the audience. David Walter is an author, speaker, and sales trainer. His claim to fame came from a cold calling hot streak during which he set 15 appointments a day for six months straight. Imagine how that would change your life, ladies and gentlemen. He later ran a prospecting call center, helping companies make millions. He's a contributing writer to Entrepreneur Magazine, and his book, Million Dollar Rebuttal, is a number one bestseller on Amazon. David, take a minute and fill in further tidbits about your life. I'm ready to go buy the book after hearing that. Absolutely. <laughs> You're an announcer and you didn't even know it. Of I'm, that's I'm, I'm, I'm learning. And for, ladies and gentlemen, all you got to do is go to milliondollarrebuttal.com slash free dash book. And you are going to be able to see a great video of David talking about what He's talking about in the book, you know, and uh, he's got a great video of him holding the book and telling you valuable stuff. So check it out also, again. Book I'll have offer. It. What's it's that? easier. Plainbookoffer.com. Okay. Got it. Plainbookoffer.com. Beautiful. Getting the free and the hyphen can get people confused. Got it. And uh, we'll have all that in the show notes, ladies and gentlemen. So check it out. So David, tell us just a little bit about your life. Well, Let's see. I was born in Orange, Texas. And no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, like most people, I've gone through ups and downs. And, uh, you know, my father, uh, he had an air conditioning business the whole time. And when I got old enough, after going to college, I worked for him and helped him make a million dollars. And then the whole thing fell apart. And uh, that's how I ended up at this place where I did cold calling and doing all these amazing things that I talk about. Mm -hmm. But to segue into what we're talking about, I always I always wanted to be an author. From an early age, I even when I was right out of high school, I wrote a children's I wrote a children's book, and researched about how to get books published and mailed it off to publishers. Uh, I got letters back. One wanted me to to self publish, which you know thirty years ago wasn't a, really a thing, right? Mm. Now it's self publishing is big, 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 big. Yeah, but. I had that dream, man, and I always want to be an author. And uh, there are some wolf-like companies that prey on people's desires. Because out in the audience right now, I'm sure there's people that want to be an author. 
podcaster, author, and uh, they dream of it like I dreamed of. It. And you may see them advertising, you know, do, 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 follow <laughs> us, follow us. We're amazing. Sometimes they may even have a picture with somebody famous, right? What I've learned is that person may not actually know them. That may just be a little quick. I bump up against you and hold up a selfie. And, you know, like I took a picture with Grant Cardone. Mm. But Grant Cardone doesn't really know me. Yes. You know, I don't put that up there on my website and be like, ah, Grant Cardone. (laughs) But some people do. Yeah, exactly. It's fake. Mm. You got to look out for the fakers, the wolves in sheep clothing. And uh, they, they pray. And I, there was a company I started following out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, that had a lot of these, you know, these fake episodes they pay to be on Fox News. Right. But it only shows up in the middle of the night and it never aired on TV. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. The fake yeah. stuff. You know, you don't know it's fake until you get into the marketing world. Like I, I mean, you have been, you know, for yeah. years now, mm. we start knowing from the Insiders Club kind of how to spot the fake ones and who's real, who's fake. But you fall for these people, and a telltale sign of it is almost always, we do it all. A one-stop shop for everything you need, book cover design. We have editors that edit your book. We'll market it, and we'll make you famous. And, uh, you know, people can be a master of one thing, but usually they're not masters of it all. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like we are ready for you to share your worst investment ever. And since no one goes into their worst investment thinking it will be, tell us a bit about the circumstance leading up to it and tell us your story. I put all my faith and hope, right? I just saw these posts over and over again. You know, he was on Fox News and he's got these pictures with famous people and he talked about marketing a book and all this stuff. And I thought these guys were going to help me. And boy, I saved up my money, 10 grand, invested just knowing that I was on my way to fame and fortune being an author. And boy, it, I still had that dream even a couple months into it. And then things started to fall, fall apart, fall apart. The wheels started coming off the wagon. You know, the, they weren't editing the book. The book cover came back. It was terrible. Uh, no edits. The book, it was terrible. And then I started seeing signs on the news and stuff of things, this company was being indicted for fraud. They ended up in court. My manuscript was held up because I signed the rights of my manuscript over to this company. My book, The Million Dollar Rebuttal, was in this criminal's hands and people were trying to sue them. They started trying to, what happened is they started offshoring everything to India, to people who didn't know what they were doing and then taking more clients than they could you know, getting greedy, taking more than they could deliver and having shoddy work done. And then the the whole thing started falling apart and they were stealing people's money and not delivering what they promised. Not even close. Mm. They barely edited my document. They gave me a terrible book design and that was it. Never any marketing, none of the things they promised me. Mm. Nothing. And how did it, how did it end up? I mean, that's such a that's such a downer when you're so excited about you know finally yeah, taking this. It was a loss of time. Um, I had to debate because there was a class action lawsuit, um, and they finally sent me a letter and said if I release them, they I can't sue them, but they will release my manuscript. And I thought, you know what? I'd really like to have my ten grand back, but I really want my book. Yeah, I want to start marketing it now, and so I, I released them and I got my I got my license back to my book. And, uh, you know, I had to learn how to market my book on my own, which is really what people should do. Mm. That's the most important, you know, be an author, but you've got to know how to market your book. Mm. If you don't know how to market the book, if you can make anything, the world does not beat a path to your door. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, how would you describe the lessons you learned from, from that experience, but also maybe also from what you learned about self-marketing? Well, I mean, just go check the BB rating of anybody that you're going to buy. Believe it or not, nine times out of 10, they have a bad, bad BB rating. And for the international BB. listeners out there, that's the Better Business Better Bureau. Business Bureau, yeah. Which um, is a rating system. Now we have more rating systems that are on social media and things like that, you know, let's say Google or whatever, but the traditional one in America has always been Better Business Bureau. Yep, it's a good place to check. And lo and behold, you'll have some bad reviews there. 
Now everybody could have a couple, but when they have a lot and none of them are replied to mm. and they just don't care, then that's a good sign that they have. But I guess my big lessons were is specialization. If you want a book cover design, do go with somebody who specializes in book covers. Because your cover, if you're on Kindle or you're on Amazon, your cover is going to be small and it better be really good to capture people's interest. And that that's, if people judge a book by its cover. So, I mean, I recommend, I recommend, um, oh, 99 Designs. Yep. Yep. It's a great, you can have people go out and bid on your book, like compete and then turn in a bunch of designs and you pick them. So that's, mm. that's one place I learned. And then book butchers, the main thing is you need a good editor for the book. Well, it's the main thing I wanted these people to do. Nice. They all ended up in jail. These guys out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, but book butchers is my best investment. Book Tell butchers, us about them. They, I found them in another investment and they do a fantastic job at editing the book. I get compliments on my, the way my book was written in all this stuff. They do a good job. Um, and they, they can, they can help redo a whole manuscript, just do slight editing, wherever you feel you need, how much editing you need. And every great author needs a great editor. And I, I recommend those guys. Incredible. I work, I've been working with them now. Uh, I have them edit my articles to entrepreneur to make sure it's all, all good. Looks good. You got to, you got to put your best foot forward. And how do you, yeah, how do they, how do they charge? Um, that's just, it's economical based on what you need done. You know, yeah. it's more for books and you can have them do articles and review those, but I really recommend, I have ADD and I'm dyslexic. Mm. So I can read something and then not even see the mistakes that I'm making. Right. The last thing you would do is get out there, put something out in the world. Cause there are those people, those eggheads that go look for a misspelled word and track you down and let you know, you got a misspelled word, exactly. you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, it can happen to the best of us. There's, I don't think there's any document that's perfect, Yeah. but you try to get as close to perfect and book butchers is the company I recommend. But really that main lesson was don't look for a panacea mm. like, you can do it all. Yep. Um, and of course I found click funnels to help you market your book as a great way to market yep. uh, your book, Russell Brunson. And then, uh, promoting your book. I really like, uh, now publish, promote and profit Rob Kosberg. I like him. I don't know if you've heard of him. Nope. Tyler Wagner authors unite helps you get PR and can get you on podcasts. No, no. He helps you with PR. Right. Uh, Jeremy Ryan Slate, Command Your Brand, can help you with PR. I mean, mm. podcast. right. podcasting, podcasting, podcasting. And then uh, Colin, who's new to my group, I, I don't remember his name, but he also has a, a podcast. But just look for great resources. Right. You've got to find somebody who's really good. At, those are great resources that I recommend. Authors mm. Unite, they're awesome. Um, book Butchers, that's going to be your go-to. I recommend them yep. editing your book. And I'm telling you now, if you're an author, having a good, warm, fuzzy feeling knowing you have an editor and, yeah. and you're going to submit it and you trust them and it's going to come back done well, that's the feeling you're going to write your second book. And your third, once you have that, I'm already halfway through my second book. And I already know I've got book butchers to make me look good. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, maybe I'll, I'll share some of my takeaways from your story. You know, the first thing is... Um, we are all vulnerable at times when we're trying to do something for our own business or for ourselves that we're overworked, you know, we're busy, we can't do it all. And it's just such a natural feeling to try to fall for somebody that says, I can do it all for you. We so desperately want that at that moment. And, and, and you know, there, I'm sure there are some people out there that can do it all. It's probably a very small number and they're probably so expensive that, you know, working with them is very hard. But generally, when you're really vulnerable, it's so easy to turn over everything. Like, you know, I can do all of your social media marketing. I can do all of your paid advertising. I can do all of your Instagram, LinkedIn, yeah. Twitter. I can do you all of it. What each can... one has its own unique world yeah. that you have to understand. I, I get you. And the second part of this too is that <clears throat> nobody knows 
you and your content like you. And that's the other challenge is that, you know, uh, when you want to hand something over to someone in hopes that they're going to be able to take care of it all and just give it to them so many times that also just fails, not necessarily because the person's not necessarily competent in the area of expertise, but just because nobody can express you like you. Or they don't and, care as much about it. Exactly. You're a stack on their desk. Yep. Right. When you're going to be the one that's passionate about what you're doing. Yeah. So it's like, <clears throat> so anyways, what my main takeaway is this, you know, understand, ladies and gentlemen, when you are vulnerable, understand when you're desperate, understand when you think this is the right way to go. Or this is what everybody does. And, and take this lesson from David and slow down and take it step by step. Um, so let me ask you, David, based upon what you learned from this story and what you continue to learn, I would like you to think about a young man or woman out there who, who is in the process of wanting to write their first book and all that. What one action would you recommend that they take to avoid suffering the same fate? The one action? That's always hard to get it to one. Mm. I mean, the biggest thing if you're going to write is you got to know how you're going to edit your book. That's, that's number one. You got to have that. But really you need to be thinking about your marketing before you even ever write your book. How, how are you going to get that book out to the world? And I think people think of that. I thought of it last. Mm. I thought of it you know, magically. I thought of, boy, if I write this book, the whole world's going to love me and want to read my book. And you're just one of billions of books out there. Um, so I do want to caution people about, about audiobooks. Try to avoid Amazon's audiobook program where they find the editor. Mm. They set your price however they want to. I have not yet done one of my own. So that's one thing I'm going to be looking at is my right. next book. I want to get, I got to do it myself to have all the rights to it mm. and be able to set the price because your podcast is your, your audiobook should be your most expensive thing and they'll price it cheap. So right. they can put it on their, well, I forget what their service is where they, people can get, but it, they're serving themselves. Mm. So they can get a bunch of cheap audiobooks. And boy, I, I want to rail against that. I'd like to get a lot of authors out there to get mad about it. They price the book based on the, the number of pages. Mm. Can you believe that? Not the Does value. the number of pages judge a book? No, in fact, I, when I look at an audio book and I see one that's four hours and I see one that's 14, I always go with the four hour one. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm like, uh, thank you author for reducing this down to a manageable amount for me. Thank you very much. I don't want to hear I 19 don't hours know worth of how they get away with that. I don't know how they get away with it. Because it seems cockamamie logic to me. And I thought, how would, why would they have such cockamamie logic? And, you know, I would admit, I would admit that it's hard to price an audio book, but just trying to size it down to uh, one size fits all. And we just look at how many pages it, it seems to me a little self-serving hmm. when they can turn around and put it out on their site. Uh, what's, what is their site? For audible. Audiobooks? Yeah. Audible. They could put it on yep. their site there. Yeah. So. I just had to rail against that for, for a minute. Got it. But yeah, keep your marketing down. Yep. Um, look at the, there's a few funnels out there. I like click funnels, but there's a mm. few out there. Look at the different funnels and start to understand the world of funnels. Of fun, yeah. Creating a book funnel. I, that's my first step. That's what I would do is look at the yeah. world and think about the last thing would be what's your end game? You're not going to make money in your book most likely until like Grant Cardone says, until what is his fourth or fifth book? Mm. He grew and became famous. You're not going to likely make a lot of money just writing one book. Yep. So what's your, how are you going to make money on that? And I had a, I had a, um, an author that took me under his wing, who the, the guy that wrote um, Instagram Secrets. He lives in San Antonio, mm. and he took me under his wing, and he we met. And he said, he said, how are you going to make money with your book? And he said, you need you need generally speaking, to to have video training and some kind of a um, a system you're going to sell to train people. And that's part of your funnel. Yep. And most likely you're going to need giveaways and like bonuses and stuff. Mm. So when you're writing your book, you should already be thinking about uh, maybe don't put this in the book. Maybe this could be a booklet. Maybe this could be uh, a chart. 
Um, this could maybe I can get a little sub book that I'll be able to give away. And boy, you will be so far ahead of the game. If you think about your marketing first and realize you're going to need, I just talked to an author today, uh, somebody in our group, mm -hmm. his eyes went lit up when he realized that he should be reaching towards having a bunch of testimonials, right? video content, that that's what he's going to sell when he makes his book number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then that's the other thing I would say, make your book, try to figure out how to make your book number one, a bestseller. And um, I recommend a site called BookBub. <laughs> There's a big secret I'm giving away. There it is. That's how I got my book to be number one. Mm. But you got to listen to this podcast. And if you, if you listen long enough to get that secret, booyah. And I got that one from Rob Kosberg. Mm hmm so that's a read as many books from authors and associate with authors and authors like, you know, if you see an author that's going to be interviewed on a podcast, listen, like me, they're going to drop some nuggets, uh, get in, immerse yourself into that world, associate with those people. And uh, you'll, you'll be way ahead of the curve. You'll avoid all the scams. You'll get the straight dope from the people like me who already been there and we paid all the scammers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we get your advice for free. <laughs> And I wish that I had gotten that advice. I've written five books now. And um, I would say uh, it's been a challenge. And I, like, like you, I kind of thought just writing it was enough. I didn't realize the marketing. And I can just, for the listeners out there, I just can really confirm that what David is saying is so true. Um, when I was young, I was in the university at Cal State Long Beach. And we had a seven-story library full of books it was full you know it was amazing and I went there every day to study and and it <clears throat> every floor was just rows and rows of stacks to the ceiling of books and I say I always say that you know when I published my first book I was so proud of it and it, but it was just like I walked into that library I went up to the fourth floor to the 15th row of books to the third shelf and two books over I put my book there and now I was an author. <laughs> but when I put my book there, not one damn person knew it was there. Yeah. And that was me thinking that just putting it on the shelf and that's it. And so what you're yeah. saying, I totally, uh, you know, yeah, agree with. Secret. It took me a while actually podcasting. <laughs> What's a podcast? Yeah. I don't need no podcast. I want to be on real media. I want to be on the radio. That's old media. <laughs> so start figuring out your podcast strategy from day one and align it with your book perfect yeah you got to yep. get your podcast strategy going mm, great stuff now, all great to say you got to be russell brunson says get your dream 100 your dream 100 podcast yeah. that uh, john lee dumas says your avatar your yep. perfect listener right who's your perfect person who's going to buy your book and then as he says uh russell brunson says where do they hang out what sites do they go to what podcasts do they listen to and be making a list of those podcasts. Boy, I wish I could go back in time now. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, you get all of that advice from David right now today. So you don't have to make those mistakes. Last question. What's your number one goal for the next 12 months? My number one goal is a secret. Mm. <laughs> but I can tell you that uh, I want to get on a lot of podcasting. I want to do a lot of podcasting and I'm creating my own podcast. So like you, I'll be joining podcast paradise Yep. Um, with uh, John Lee Dumas and entrepreneur on fire. Yep. But yeah. I want to get a lot of, but I have one podcast in mind. That's the biggest one I can think of. And I want to get there. Ooh. I just, my last goal was to be an entrepreneur magazine. So I, I would recommend you people jump through hope, jump through hoops, hoops. You want to level up, right? Mm -hmm. Try to become a number one bestseller. Try to do things. And once you've leveled up and you've got some titles, go after old media and, and actually having entrepreneur, you can apply to be an entrepreneur co contributor, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's some other ones that you can apply to. Apply. You just might get accepted. My friend, who I told him to apply, um, he just got accepted. We just were high-fiving each other this morning. you know. Got it. So don't be shy. Don't be afraid. you got to believe in yourself and that your message is uh, the world needs to hear it. Level up episode 330, Eric Sue, who works with together with uh, Neil Patel. He wrote a book called Leveling Up, 
and you oh, really? remind me of that. Cool. Yeah. So check it's it out. Level up. Leveling up. Oh, leveling and, up. Yep. But the idea that you're telling us is to just take step by step and move up. I love it. Well, listeners, there you have it. Another story of loss to keep you winning. My number one goal for the next 12 months is to help you, my listener, reduce risk and increase return in your life. To achieve this, I've created our community at myworstinvestmentever.com. And when you join, you get the special discount on my valuation masterclass boot camp. As we conclude, David, I want to thank you again for coming on the show. And on behalf of A. Stotts Academy, I hereby award you alumni status for turning your worst investment ever into your best teaching moment. You didn't know that was coming. There you go. Do you have any parting words for our audience? Finally graduated. You did it. (laughs) What are your parting words? Um, I just, I think you can do it if you believe in yourself. Mm. That's more than anything. You want to make a lot of appointments, cold calling. You want to write a book. You have got to believe you're an author. Look in the mirror and see yourself as an author staring back at you. Uh, and then associate with the people who are in that world. Mm. That's the key. Hang out. They always say, right? Judge you by your friends. Yep. Hang out with people. Who, hang out with people who have made it already and let them rub off on you. And by the way, watching podcasts like this, I consider hanging out with people yeah. that, are, that have made it and they're important. Yep. Fantastic. That's a wrap on another great story to help us create, grow, and protect our, well, fellow risk takers. This is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stott, saying, I'll see you on the upside.